Hey allies, that time we had a news roundup for you and we got some great bits for you including some new graphics drivers which are really helping with performance, new compact game bar if you didn't know about it and also a update to Lost of Scaling now offering up to 4 times frame generation. First off, let's have a look at the new graphics drivers. If you go into Update Center, you should have had an update in here. For some reason, they don't show after the update, but you can check out the latest version in the AMD software. So you can make sure that you've got the latest version that was released on the 7th of August. As you can see, with no upscaling at 720p, we're actually getting incredible performance around 80 frames per second when we're not moving massively around. Though we do get some dips occasionally, it is looking incredibly smooth. A little tip, especially if you're using Steam Big Picture mode a lot, or you are going to want to use Game Bar, make sure you go into your controller configure mappings and assign the Xbox button to a button of your choosing. I choose one of the buttons at the back, which you can just hit edit and you can find the Xbox button under actions on the gamepad menu. Now they seem to switch between bottom left and bottom right in the menus for me but it usually is on that bottom row if you want it. As I said, incredibly useful for Steam Big Picture mode. But also, if you are going to want to make use of the new Game Bar mode, oh, and be sure to update the mapping in desktop as well as Gamepad mode, otherwise you will only get it half the time. So if you are going to make use of the new Compact Game Bar, then it is only available in the Insider Track at the moment, and I'll show you how to get into that if you want to. But I do have to ask whether you do actually want to use this or not. Now, I don't use Game Bar a lot overall, but there does seem to be some hype about this. So if you do want to get into this new compact mode, and you do need to be in controller mode to make the most out of this, you need to go into the settings and turn on that compact mode once you get in here, but you will need that Xbox Insider track. Now, to do that, you need to have the Xbox Insider app, which you can get from the Microsoft Store and under Previews, Joined PC Gaming. And once you've done that and restarted your PC, you should get the Game Bar update in the Store Updates, and then you'll be able to turn on that Game Bar Compact mode. Overall though, because I mostly use Steam and a couple of other launchers, I've never really got into Game Bar. I'm sure if you are playing on Xbox Game Pass quite a lot, then this could be very useful. But let us know in the comments below if you use Game Bar at all, or whether actually just having the Xbox button mapped for Steam will make life a lot easier. You can search for it in Steam and turn it compact mode on in the settings here. And you'll also need to enable the Xbox button to switch to open this if you want. Or you need to map Windows plus G to one of those back buttons to manage the game bar on controller. Not covered by the standard system updates, remember to open my ASOS occasionally as I did have a couple of updates for Wi-Fi and the app itself in there, so do be sure to open that one up and check it out. For those of you that use Lost of Scaling, it got an X4 frame generation update and also supports G-Sync, but that won't help us on the handhelds, which introduces a new way of generating frames, generating three intermediate frames, mostly for games that already have a base frame rate of 60 if you want to make use of that 120 hertz ally screen and on the ally x as well but a lot of people swear by this although i actually still quite prefer afmf which is amd's motion fluid frames mainly because it doesn't mean fiddling with additional programs and we can just turn it on via the radeon settings now unfortunately with the latest driver it doesn't seem to have fixed the issue with the ROG Ally overlay interfering with that. As you can see, when I start this game up, it tells me that AFMF is on. But if I go and turn on the ROG overlay, which also is supposed to tell me whether AFMF is on, it tells me it is not, which is why you have that red kind of warning symbol there. And this is proved in game as, as I move around. Although it looks like I get good frame rate between 50 and 60 frames per second moving around, which you might kind of think was part of AFMF, it really isn't. If I now go and turn the ROG Ally monitor off, which can be a little bit tricky in game sometimes, it just forgets to have the controller there. You'll see that now when I move around that the frames per second really jumps up, almost double, which is what we'd expect with the AFMF and so much smoother moving around. So if you are looking to make the most of AFMF on the ROG Ally or the X, then make sure that you do not use the ROG Ally overlay 
as that still seems to break the AMD motion fluid frames for now, but I don't know why, considering it is supposed to detect it and support it. But as you'll see moving around, I did also try this out on XESS Ultra Quality Mode, and it is running phenomenally well now with Cyberpunk 2077 at 25 watts. So if you are going to have that plugged in 30 watt mode, you're going to have an even smoother experience. As you saw at the beginning of this video though, I did run this with no upscaling at all at 720p, and I do feel that that does still look a lot better. So have a fiddle with the settings, especially if you're going to have plugged in, you're going to manage to do this at 900p with no upscaling, and have a great time. It's great to see that we're still getting updates for the ROG Ally and these drivers are really helping things out. Let us know in the comments below if you're going to be diving back into Cyberpunk 2077 or what other games you're going to try AFMF on first. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. now you're talking to the Choom who rescued the president of the NUSA. God damn! Truly, you've outdone yourself.